Today's video was meant to be R&D. I was going to make a one called test of a product, show you the whole making of, and then ta -da, show you the final thing at the end. But my designs had other plans, and this video kind has kind of become a reality of R&D video rather than an ideal R&D video. Not to worry. I think it's uh, good to show how everything goes wrong and what there is to learn from it. So, without any further ado, here's some failures. First of all, I started off with the idea to make a wallet. And on paper, it looked very promising. So I got the inspiration for this piece from those Japanese rucksacks that kids take to school. Here's a picture. And I quite like the curvy shape of that. So I designed some ideas for that and I bought some fake leather because I'm trying to keep the whole sustainable thing going. And on the description of the leather, it said it was like 650 GSM or something, which means it's, uh, if, if it was cotton, that'd be like really thick, heavy cotton. So I thought, fine, oh, 650 sounds good because I want something thick to work with. And it arrived and it was not thick. It was very, very thin. I think for leather, 650 is almost nothing. So I think I broke several rules with working with leather. First off being that, can you see this? I overlocked it. Yeah, I overlocked the edge. Because I tried, I put two sheets together in order to try and make something thick enough that I could use. And it came out horribly. This is some of the ugliest work I've ever done. Is it even so it started out bad, the overlocking was terrible. And then I realised leather has really invisible edges and if it's slightly wonky it's really really obvious. So that was the second problem. This is was not cut very well. Usually when I cut things it doesn't have to be super super accurate. I can just do my best and that is good enough. But with leather you really have to do it perfectly otherwise it really shows. So that was my first learning curve. So I didn't even bother continuing with this, I just scrapped it. I started thinking about gluing it because a lot of people work with leather glue a lot of stuff. I didn't have any glue on me. I think glue could work to be honest but with what I had it wasn't really an option. But I went with just a simple top stitch which worked a lot better than oh let me show you focus please i briefly experimented with like burning the edges and melting it together because it is fake after all it's not real leather so i was hoping that it would like just weld basically it does melt but doesn't melt together it just melts and then looks ugly so top stitch was my best option which i did it also turned out very ugly because again the edges aren't finished it's just a raw edge and it looks horrible the second issue with this and the previous one is that even when you put two together, it's still too thin. So that was the main issue really with this design is my fabric sourcing, which is pretty, uh, that's a pretty common problem with most like design work. Finding the correct fabric is like one of the hardest bits, or at least in my opinion it is. If you have all the right connections and stuff when you're doing mass producing stuff, then it's not really an issue. But when you're trying to sample things on your own, it is quite difficult, especially on, on the internet. Just reading descriptions of stuff doesn't really help. You get a sample and then, it, cause it's only like a tiny square, it doesn't really show you what it's like. And you can't do much testing on it. I stupidly didn't even get a sample of this. I don't think they offered samples to be fair, but this was also very cheap, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, the fabric selection was wrong. Then then I wanted to go for a non-traditional interior of this wallet. As you can see there's like these little, these pockets that make up the way you put your cards and stuff. And uh, I think the fabric also made this idea worse because these pockets are so flimsy that they seem like a bad idea. And they might work quite well if the fabric was correct. And one thing is, when you're testing designs, it's okay to just give up on the piece and move on to the next one. This isn't finished, obviously, but I can already tell from this much work that this won't work. So I move on to the next one. It's okay to just stop because this is just beating a dead horse. And then, given that this fabric was incorrect, I had planned on making this other idea with the same fabric, provided the fabric was correct, but it's not. Therefore, I didn't even start the next project. I need a lot thicker, it needs to be like, visibly thick, like this thick. Okay, that's thick. this thick. So yeah, I just scrapped the, the bag and the wallet ideas with this uh, fabric. But I still had lots left, so I moved on to this other idea that I had started thinking about a year ago maybe? that I never 
try it out because I couldn't figure it out back then. It turns out it wasn't very hard to figure out. So I started it and this was the, there's like a narrow bucket hat. I was gonna go with this fake leather as the exterior and re the reverse side of the corduroy I normally use as the interior because the reverse of the corduroy feels quite nice. And it's weighty enough that the hat would feel like a good thickness. The making of it wasn't the issue, it was the designing. And that's where we came across our first problem, which was, first of all, I have a big head and my original design was just too small. I think it would suit a regular headed person, but I am not that. As you can see, this is really tight. The second issue was that I forgot to take into account for the seam allowance, which is usually not an issue I face because I usually just ignore the seam allowance to be honest. I don't really care. I, I just have a really small seam allowance and, and it's never really affected my work at all. Nothing I've ever made has been bothered by the seam allowance. Up until now, um, you can see here, it, bunt, it there was excess of the something, it, it, but it didn't line up and it looks very ugly. And in a last ditch attempt to fix it, I just sewed it down like this. I sewed it down. At that point, I then tried it on and realized it was too small, so I abandoned it. And then I went back to the drawing board, redid some maths, changed the dimensions a bit, only by a bit, and we have a pretty much decent product. This is a good sample. Why is it a good sample? First of all, it fits. Second of all, the majority of it is very neat. There's one area, again, where it was too... Something was just a bit too long. That will be fixed in the next sample. Everything else lined up perfectly. Even these two seams here are lined up perfectly, which is really nice. The interior, the interior is actually a bit big. It feels a bit bulky on the inside. It's not an issue when you put it on, but if you're just looking at it, the inside looks a bit ugly. I think I need to do, make the inside smaller, possibly. Anyway, this is a success, and I'm going to showcase it for you now.
Okay, today we are making we are making a wallet. We're making this. Yeah, that's not the best drawing. Yeah. We're making a wallet, and pretty much all we need is this. This is my my cheat sheet. This is all I need. Hopefully, uh, it's my first time making a wallet, so we'll see how this goes. Um, ah, that breaks. So I got some fake leather, so we'll see what sort of quality to this. Oh! It feels quite nice. It's really thin. That is very thin. Mm. It feels leathery. And first we need to tidy everything. Oh. First we need to tidy everything. Okay, so the reason I say that this is all I need is because the design I've made is fairly simple. All it requires is one rectangle uh, like this size and then uh, essentially this rounded shape but elongated. And hopefully that's all, uh, yeah, hopefully that will make up everything. That's the plan. So first I want to make a template. Normally you'd use pattern paper, but because they're quite small shapes, small bits of pattern paper are really flimsy. So um, I want to have something a bit more sturdy. Done. Done.
This first one I stupidly did in my fake leather. Uh, first of all, I forgot to take into account the uh, seam allowance. So first of all, it's really ugly. Let me show you. The sewing work is really ugly. Obviously on a bucket hat, it's not meant to have like these flaps. And second of all, I just did it too small because If I had to wear this hat for more than 10 minutes, I think my head would start shrinking. So, I'm on to revision number two, which I've done in the lining fabric instead of the leather. I made it one centimeter wider, which is probably not noticeable, but it, you, know, you notice it when it's on your head. And then I added the, the seam allowance to the brim, so now it sits nicely. This is just the top bit, but then the bottom bit will come on like this. and it will look sick. This is pretty good. It's nice and low. It's not too low, but the shape is like a nice, very, a very steep angle, which is what I wanted. Ah uh, yeah, well I'm not sure how insightful this video was, but I certainly learnt a lot. I'm going to keep trying at the wallet, and I want to do the bag as well, so I need to find better fabric for that. And hopefully I can make what I originally intended for the video to be, and make a cool, a cool wallet that could end up on the store one day, which is fun, that's the plan. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, 